Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I must say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people, Israel. May we and our offspring and our offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together <coughs> know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence enlighten you, and may he be kind to you. May the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Shalom. Today's read is Noach, or Noah. Our Torah portion is Genesis 6, 9 through eleven thirty two. Prophets is Isaiah 53, 1 through 55, 5. Our Brit, Brit Hadesha is Luke 1, 1 through 80. 1 Peter 3, 8 through 22, 2. Peter 2, 4 through 10. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with Elohim, and Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. <coughs> now the earth was corrupt in Elohim's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And Elohim saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all the flesh had corrupted their way of the earth. And Elohim said to Noah, I have determined to make an end to all flesh, for the earth is filled with, the violence, with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you will make it. The length of the ark 300 cubits and its breadth 50 cubits and its height 30 cubits. Make a roof for the ark and finish it to a, a cubit above and set the floor of the ark in its side. Make it with lower second and third decks. <coughs> For behold, I will bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all the flesh in which is the breath of light under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall die, but I will establish my covenant with you. And you shall come into the ark, you, your sons, and your wife, and your sons, and your wives with you. And of every living thing of all the flesh, you shall bring two of every sort in the ark, and keep them alive with you, and they shall be male and female. Of the birds according to their kinds, and the animals according to their kinds, of the creeping things of the ground according to its kind, two of every sort shall come in <coughs> to you to keep them alive. And also take with you every sort of food that is eaten and store it up. It shall serve as your food for you and for them. Noah did this. He did all that Elohim had commanded him. Then Yahweh said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made will be blotted out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that Yahweh had commanded him. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood of the waters came upon the earth, and Noah and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of cl animals that are not clean, and of birds, of, and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah, as Elohim had commanded Noah. And after seven days the waters of the flood came up on, upon the earth. In the six hundredth year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the seventh day of the, that month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. And rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. On the very same day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them in the ark. They and every beast according to its kind, and all the livestock according to their kinds, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, every winged creature. They went into the ark with Noah two and two of all flesh in which there was the breath of life. 
And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as Elohim had commanded him, and Yahweh shut him in. The flood continued for forty days on the earth. The waters increased and bore up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed so mightily on the earth that all the high mountains under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed on the mountains, covering them fifteen cubits deep. And all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds, livestock, beasts, all swarming creatures that swarm on the earth, and all mankind. Everything on dry land and whose nostril was the breast of life died. He blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the ground, man and animal, and creeping things, and birds of the heavens. They were blotted out from the earth. Only Noah was left, and those who were with him in the ark, and the water prevailed on the earth a hundred and fifty days. <clears throat> but Elohim remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the livestock that was with him in the ark. And Elohim made the wind blow over the earth, and the water subsided. The fountains of the deep and the windows of the heavens were closed. The rain from the heaven was restrained, and the waters receded from the earth continually. At the end of the hundred and fifty days, the water had abated. And in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, the ark came to rest on the mountain of Ararat. And the waters continued to abate until the ninth month. On the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. At the end of the forty days, Noah opened the door of the ark that he had made and sent forth a raven. It went forth and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set her foot, and she returned home to him in the ark. For the waters were still on the face of the whole earth, so, she put it, so he put out his hand and took her and brought her into the ark with him. He waited another seven days, and again he sent, out, sent forth the dove out to the ark. And the dove came back to him in the evening, and behold, in her mouth was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So no one knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. And he waited another seven days and sent forth a dove, and she did not return to more. In the six hundredth and the six hundred and first year, in the first month of the first day of the month, the waters were dried up dried off the earth. And Noah re removed the covering of the ark and looked and behold the face of the sky was dry. In the second month on the twenty seventh day of the month, the earth had dried out, and Elohim said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing that was with you of all flesh, birds and animals and creeping things that creep on the earth. And they may come on the earth and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. So Noah went out and his sons and his wives and his sons and wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing and every bird, everything that moves on the earth went out by families from the ark. Noah built an altar to Yahuwah and took some of the clean animals and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And when Yahuwah smelled the pleasing aroma, Yahuwah said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. And Elohim blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens and upon everything that creeps on the ground and all the fish of the sea. Into your hand they are delivered. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. And as I gave, gave, you, in, gave you the green plants, I give you everything. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is, its blood. And for your life blood, I will require a reckoning from every beast. I require it, and from man, from his fellow man, I will require a reckoning for the life of man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For Elohim made man in his own image. And you be fruitful and multiply, increase greatly on the earth and multiply in it. Then Elohim said to Noah and his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you. 
As many as came out of the ark, it is for every beast of the earth I established my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And all of them said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations I have set my bow, my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds out of the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of the flesh, of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between Yahweh and every living creature of all the flesh of this earth. Elohim said to Noah, This is a sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The sons of Noah who sent forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japhim, Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the people of the whole earth were dispersed. Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard. He drank the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it on both their shoulders and walked backwards and covered the nakedness of their fathers. The faces were turned backwards and they did not see their father's nakedness. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew that his youngest son had done to him, he said, Curse be Canaan. A servant of servants shall be, he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be Yahweh, the Elohim of Shem, and let Canaan be a servant. May Elohim enlarge Japheth, and let him dwell in the tent of Shem, and let Canaan be his servant. And after the flood, Noah lived 350 years, and all the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. These are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, sons born to them after the flood. The, shun, the sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, Raphath, and Tigamar. The sons of Javan, Elish, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, and Dedanan. From these, the coastland people spread in all their lands, each with his own language by their clans and their, and their nations. The son of Ham, Cush, Egypt, Put, Canaan. The son of Cush, the sons of Cush, Seba, Havala, Sapta, uh, Rama, and Septica. The sons of Rama, Sheba, <coughs> Dedan. Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first of the earth to be a mighty man. He was mighty hunter before Yahweh. Therefore it is said that, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before Yahweh, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna, and the land of Shinar. From that land he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, the Hoboth Ur, Kala, and risen between Nineveh and Kala. This is a great city, Egypt, fathered Ledim, Ananim, Lahaban, Naph, Tehem, Pathrushim, Chalcihim, from whom the Philistines came, and Capthrum. Canaan father Sidon is first born in Heth, and the Jebusites and Amorites, the Girgashites and the Hivites and the Archites and the Sinites. And the Arvites and the Zemrites and the Hamathites. Afterwards, the clans of the Canaanites dispersed, and the territory of the Canaanites extended from Sidon in the direction of Gerar as far as the Gaza. And in the direction of Sidon, Gomorrah, Adma, and Zeboim, as far as Lasha. These are the sons of Ham by their clans, their languages, and their lands, and their nations. To Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber, the elder brother of Japheth. Children were born, the sons of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arphashad, Lod, Aram, the sons of Aram, Uz, Hol, Gether, and Mash. Apashad fathered Shila, and Shila fathered Eber. Eber were born two sons, the name of one was Peleg, for in his days the earth was divided, and his brother's name was Joktan. 
Dr. and Father Almadad. Shilaf Hazmar Hazer Methes Jura Hadur Azul Dikla Obel Abimiel Sheba Alfer Hibala Jobab and these were the sons of Joktin. The territory in which they live extended from mission and direction of Sifra to the hill country of the east. These are the sons of Shem by their clans, their languages, and the lands of their nations. These are the clans of Son and Noah according to their genealogies and their nations. And from the from these nation, from these the nations spread abroad of the earth after the flood. Now that the whole earth had one language and the same words, and the peop as the people migrated from the east. They found a plain in the land of, Sh of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had a brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And Yahweh said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is the only beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they will propose to do will n will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their languages so they may not understand one another's speech. So Yahweh dispersed them from over the face of the earth, and they all they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because Yahweh confused the language of all the earth, and from there Yahweh dispersed them over the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. When Shem was a hundred years old, he fathered Arapashad. Two years later, two years after the flood, and Shem lived after he fathered Arapashad five hundred years, and he had other sons and daughters. When Arapashad had lived thirty-five years, he fathered Shelah, and Arapashad lived after he fathered Shelah four hundred and three years, and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived thirty years, he fathered Eber. And Shelah lived after he fathered Eber 403 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Eber had lived 34 years, he fathered Peleg. And Eber lived after he fathered Peleg 430 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Peleg had lived 30 years, he fathered Ru. And Peleg lived after he fathered Ru 209 years, and had other sons and daughters. When Ru had lived 32 years, he fathered Shrug. And Rud lived after he fathered Shurag 207 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shurag had lived 30 years, he fathered Nahor. Nahor. And Shurag lived after he fathered Nahor 200 years and he had other sons and daughters. And when Nahor had lived 29 years, he fathered Terah. And Nahor lived after he fathered Terah 119 years and he had other sons and daughters. When Terah lived 70 years, he followed Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Terah's descendants. Now, these are the generation of Terah. Terah followed Abraham, Nahor, Haran, and Haran followed Lot. Haran died in the presence of his father Terah in the land of his kindred of Ur and the Chaldeans. And Abraham and Nahor took wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Melchah. In the name of Haran, the father of Melchah and Iska. Now Sarai was barren, she had no children. Terah took Abraham to his, to his sons, and Lot, the sons of Haran, his grandson, and Sarai, his daughter in law, his son, Abram's wife. And they went forth together from Ur to, to the sh of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they settled there. The days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Isaiah 53, 1 through 55, 5. Who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of Yahweh been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their face, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by Elohim, and afflicted. 
but he was pierced by a transgression, he was crushed for, crushed for iniquities. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter. And like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation who considered that he is cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich man in his death. Although he has done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of Yahweh to crush him. He was put He has put him to grief, and his soul makes an offering for guilt. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. This, the will of Yahweh, shall prosper in the land. Out of the anguish of his soul you shall see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And you shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul to the death. And was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many. And makes intercession for the transgressors. Sing, O barren one, who did not bear. Break forth in the singing and cry aloud, for you have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of one who is married, says Yahweh. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. Be not confounded, for you will not be disgraced. For you will not for you will forget the shame of your youth and reproach and the reproach of your widowhood you will remember no more. For your maker is your husband. Yahweh's host is his, Yahweh of hosts is his name. And the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. And the Elohim of the earth he is called, for Yahweh has called you. Like a wife deserted and grieved in spirits, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your Elohim. For a brief moment I deserted you, but with a great compassion I will gather you in overflowing anger for a moment I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love I will have compassion on you, says Yahweh your Redeemer. This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so I have sworn at you that I will not be angry with, again with you. And I will not rebuke you, for the mountains may depart, and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says Yahweh, who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony, and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate, and your gates of carbuncles, and all your walls of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by Yahweh, and great shall be the peace of your children, and righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. If anyone stirs off strife, it is not from me. Whoever stirs up strife with you shall fall because of you. Behold, I have created this smith that blows who blows the fires of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed. And you shall refute every tongue that raises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh. And their vindication from me, declares Yahweh. Come anyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourself in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples. 
a leader and a commander for those peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that did not know. A nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because Yahweh your Elohim and, and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Luke 1, 1 through 80. And as much as many have undertaken to compile a narrative with things that have, have been accomplished by us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word who delivered them to us, it seems good to me also, having followed all the things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent, Theophilus, that you may have concerning the things you may have you have been taught in the days of Herod king of Judea there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abaha and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth and they were both righteous before Elohim walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord but they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years now while he was serving as priest before Elohim, when his division was on duty according to the customs of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And the, there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. For your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth, Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he, he will be great before the Lord. And he, will, he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled by the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the, to the Lord their Elohim. And you will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn in the hearts of the fathers of children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. And the angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of Elohim, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news and behold you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place because you did not believe my words which will be fulfilled in their time and the people who were waiting for Zechariah and when they wondered at his delay in the temple and when he came out he was unable to speak to them and they realized that he had a vision in the temple and he kept making signs to them and remained mute and when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife conceived, and for five months she kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me, to take away my reproach among the peoples. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from the Elohim to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, in the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But well, she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. An angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with Elohim. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord Elohim will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And, it, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel, angel answered, answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High and overshadow you. Therefore the children should the child to be born will be called holy the son of Elohim and behold your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son and this is the sixth month of her child of who was six month with her who is called barren for nothing will be impossible with Elohim and Mary 
said, Behold, I am a servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. In those days Mary went in those days Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me that the mother of my, of the, my Lord shall come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what it was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in Elohim my Savior, for he has looked on the humble estate of, my ser of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will, come, will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and he has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of humble estate. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his offspring forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. Now the time for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son, and her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. And on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they would call and they would have called him Zechariah after his father, but his mother answered, No, he shall be called John. And they said to her, None of your relatives is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, inquiring what he wanted him to be called. And he asked for enough for writing in the tablet and wrote, His name is John. And they all wondered, and immediately his mouth was open and his tongue t loose, and he spoke, Blessed, Blessing Elohim. And fear came upon came on all their neighbors and all the things that were talked about through all the hill country of Judea. And all who heard them laid up in their hearts, saying, What then will this child be? For the, land, for the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesying, saying, Blessed be the Lord, of, of, Lord Elohim of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from the old, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show the mercy promised to our fathers and to who remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our father Abraham to grant us, that we being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, and holiness and righteousness before him all of our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, and for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people, and forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our Elohim, whereby the sun, sunrise shall visit us from on high, to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And a child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the wilderness until the day of the public appearance to Israel. 1 Peter 3, 8-22 Finally, all of you who have unity in mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind, do not repay evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, for on the contrary, bless for, for to this you are called, that you may obtain a blessing for whoever desires to love life and sees good days. Let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. <clears throat> Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. 
Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is God, for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteous, righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor and mis Hamashiach, the Lord is as holy. Always be prepared to make a difference to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in your Yet, do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Hamashiach may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be Elohim's will, than for doing evil. For Hamashiach also suffered once for sins, the righteousness of the unrighteous, that he might bring us to Elohim, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in a spirit in which he was, he went proclaimed to spirits of the prison. Before they formally did not obey, when all his patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, who were brought safely through the water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to Elohim for a good conscience. Through the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of Elohim with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. 2 Peter 4 through 10. <coughs> For if Elohim did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them in the chains of glory darkness to be kept until judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world, but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others. <clears throat> when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as the righteous men lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul, over their lawless deeds, and he saw that he saw and heard. When the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep to keep the right, unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, especially those who indulge in the last in lust of defiling passions and despise authority, bold and willful, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glory, glorious ones. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Shem Yeshua. Amen.